all of tonight's rescues are true stories. We've sometimes used actors and stuntmen, but everything you see and hear is based on the accounts of the people involved. They've helped us to reconstruct events as they happen. Tonight on 999, the boy who fell into the gorilla pit and the men who got him out. The one in a million car crash and the injury that nobody should have survived. And video reporter Fiona Foster takes to the skies with London's flying doctors. Millions of people visit Britain's zoos every year. Families mainly, parents taking their children for what's normally a safe and educational day out. That's what made what happened here at Jersey Zoo in the Channel Islands not just unusual, but unique. People come here from all over the world to see the zoo founded by the naturalist Gerald Durrell as a protected home for endangered species. It was the first choice for the children of the Merritt family from Sussex when they came to the Channel Islands on holiday. What happened then was a terrifying accident, every parent's nightmare, and a rescue attempt that required a special brand of courage from an ambulance man and a zookeeper. In our reconstruction, the Merritt family are played by actors, but more than half our report was filmed on the day by an amateur cameraman as it actually happened. You can see it in your mind uh, in, in very slow motion of what actually happened. Not that I actually see him fall, but... Uh... Pauline screaming, you know, the, the shock of uh, the look on her face, because I was looking at her at the time. And when I turned around, he was actually gone. If I had only been sort of that much closer, perhaps I could have grabbed his leg or something. So, well, you never know. <laughs> now this is a milk snake, right? A milk snake from Mexico. Right, who's going to touch him first? Even. Leaving! Leaving! Get down! Come on! Always waiting for you. It was the very first day of our holiday, and it was Lloyd's birthday, my youngest one. Lloyd decided that he wanted to go to the zoo. And it was funny because the, the man that actually took the video, when we was looking at the little monkeys, he was there and he followed us to the gorilla pit. And of uh, course, he was there at the right time. So we actually managed to get to the wall itself. I just couldn't see that much, so they're being very small. So I lifted Lee Van up onto the actual railings next to the enclosure. I looked around to see what she was screaming about. I just started screaming and shouting that my little boy had fallen over the wall. Oh, no. Stephen's first reaction was, oh, well, he'll be all right. He's bound to have fallen on grass. There's got to be grass at the bottom. When I actually looked over the edge, he was just lying down the bottom in the, in the enclosure on the concrete with a few gorillas around him trying to touch him. I did think he was dead because um, he just didn't move. He was just laying there. I honestly couldn't see him breathing at all. He was completely still, and there was a little trickle of blood running from the back of his head. It was so far down, it was, it was concrete, so I just thought, um, well, I thought he, he died. I thought, I thought he'd had it. Do you think to yourself, um, I'm sure you haven't brought this child up just to end like this um, after all these years? Quick! There's a kid fallen in the pit over the other side. Find the ambulance. I'm on the I was just going absolutely berserk, to say the least, because all I wanted 
was for somebody to get in there to get him out. And uh, everybody kept telling me, he, oh, he's all right, he'll be all right. I just wanted to see for myself that he was all right. Yambo was, uh, was an adult silverback, and it's, it's possible to go in with adult silverbacks if you do it from an early age. But uh, no one's been in with Yambo, as far as I, I know, never. And at his age and his size, it would uh, be a very unwise move. With Yambo so close to the child, any attempt to dart him could have ended up with him angered. He could have got aggressive in that situation. Also, with seven animals out there, you would probably have to do them all. Because one unconscious gorilla is going to anger the next one, and so on and so forth. It may have inflamed the situation. So Andy Wood had to get the gorillas away from Levan and back into their cage. Get him out. <laughs> All I wanted them was to get Levan out, so I kept saying, you know, why aren't you getting him out? Just get him out. And uh, then one of the policemen said, well, come round here. You uh, prepare basically inside areas to bring the animals in, make sure they're securely locked, put some food in for to entice them inside. People were holding my feet, and then they started to shout his name to keep him, try to keep him awake, although he was out cold as far as I could see. I was, was worried that um, he actually come to and, you know, looking up, see him, these, um, these animals staring over top of him, especially that big one. Uh, it, um, it might put him into a stake of shot. Domo, Domo. <laughs> Lee Van's crying upset the gorillas, and the keepers were able to get them back into the cages. Levan's going to be fine. OK, they're bringing him out. Look, all the, rest of, all the rest are down here as well. They've been brought in. But not all of the gorillas were in the cages. Hobbit, a young, excitable male who wasn't allowed outside with the others, had escaped when the doors were opened. He was running loose in the pit when ambulance man Brian Fox arrived. You could see a gorilla running around, and a little boy at the, in the pit, crying and screaming. There was no danger to the little boy's life at that stage. He was, while he's crying and screaming, we're OK. But then he stops and he goes on his back. And then there's a chance of him choking. Every second was important now. Andy Wood had never been in with the gorillas before, but he didn't have time to hesitate. Here's somebody. Good in an emergency, you don't really have time for emotions, whether you, you think you feel scared or whatever. You convince yourself it's going to work all right, and it tends to. Well, I first entered the enclosure, went down to the child. Uh, you could see he was badly injured, um, was told not to touch him by an ambulance man, who uh, entered the enclosure along with another keeper. I'm over the wall before anybody can see, and I'm in with the keepers, and it's done. I then can see the little boy. You could see that he had a fractured skull. You can tell that by blood coming out of the ear and the nose. You can also see he's got a fractured arm, because it's an open fracture. There are bones sticking out just above the wrist. You then have to run your hands down and do a check all down his spine, because you have to check before you actually turn somebody over just right away just to save their life. If you do that without checking their spine, you can make them paraplegic. You've got to check that first and do it in sequence. So you check from the head and work down. I was more concerned for him than uh, myself, because he, he was uh, thoroughly white and uh, very, very nervous about the entire situation, obviously, not knowing gorillas. And all you can see is this 160-pound 
couple of them hurtling up and down the bank, which uh, didn't do much good. You find yourself in a situation like that, even if it's intentionally going in with, a, with an animal of uh, whatever sort, you have to be confident and sure of yourself. So you come across with a positive attitude. I just looked and you can see this gorilla running around. You think, oh no, look at the size of him. <laughs> and he really is, he looks like a big airy monster. And you just really terrified him that he's gonna do something to everybody, you know, you know and you're just trying, just trying to protect the little boy, but at the same time, so frightening when you're shaking. And I'm almost as white as my shirt. Hobbit was getting more and more excited. They had to find a way of getting Lee Van out quickly. Well, I can't remember waking up and seeing the gorillas, but there was these fire engines, and they they were going to put the ladder down, but the ladder was too short. But they threw a rope down. <coughs> <coughs> He can't actually remember falling over and he can't remember seeing the gorillas. That is a blessing in disguise because your brain can work two ways. It can either shut it out completely or he can have really terrible nightmares. I think the accident has changed Lee Van and they said that his skull had completely smashed and uh, there's a slither of actual skull embedded in his brain but it hadn't pierced it it was just sort of lying there and they were going to operate but when they'd done a full brain scan they said that it wasn't doing any harm so they've left it it's only because he was so young and his actual skull wasn't form, formed properly you know it's still soft that he actually survived because he actually hit his head on the wall as he went down I do have problems with my injuries because I'm not allowed to play football because it affects my head if I fall over. At last, ten minutes after he'd fallen, zookeepers and an ambulance man... I often watch the video about two times a month and I like it. I like the bit where um, Brian jumped in from the top and saved me because he's so brave. Well, I think... Jambo's quite um, friendly and not like how people describe gorillas. With the child, he was extremely gentle. I wasn't particularly worried that the gorillas were going to injure him. It's really not their way. They're not that sort of an animal. And Jambo, weighing in at around, well over 400 pounds of basically muscle, uh, is obviously capable of some amazing feats. But um, they control their strength. They react differently to childs and adults anyway. It's less of a threat, and an injured child is a no threat. I want to be a zookeeper when I grow up because I like feeding the animals and I particularly like gorillas. King Kong was fierce and angry, but they're not really like that, just gentle, friendly. It doesn't really need an accident as dramatic as